Hi there, folks. So in this lesson, I want us to start drawing some primitive shapes. We've already looked at how we can draw surfaces and attach images to those surfaces, and even manipulate pixels in previous lessons. But something that we might fundamentally want to do is just draw things like lines, rectangles, or textured images. So let's start with one of those primitives and dive in. So there's different ways that we can do this. And if I look at the different categories in SDL under video, because we've initialized the video subsystem here in our code, you'll see that there are categories for display and 2D accelerated uh, rendering, rectangle functions, and many others. So let's go ahead and take a moment to look at the 2D accelerated rendering features. And as mentioned, it says that we have a bunch of functions where we can do 2D accelerated rendering. So things like plotting pixel points, lines, rectangles, and even images. Now, this is going to be a little bit different than our surfaces, for instance, in that when we draw a single pixel point, it's just going to show up in a place and time. So somewhere in our main application loop, we're going to have to consistently keep redrawing these points versus a surface, where if we modify the pixels, those changes will be preserved. But we'll see this in an example. So anyway, let's look through this API and see if there's something interesting that we might want to do and explore. And if we scroll down enough, we'll see a bunch of these sort of render draw line functions. And these look pretty interesting and somewhat self-explanatory. So let's see if we can draw a line. And at the API, we have SDL render draw line. And well, this first thing is new here, this SDL underscore renderer. And it looks like it takes a pointer to some new object that we're going to have to create. And this is our hardware accelerated renderer. The rest of the arguments are sort of self-explanatory, the starting point of our line segment and the ending point. So we specify these coordinates, and we have an integer version for this. And if we add an F at the end here, we can do a floating point version for this. But this looks fine. And there's actually a nice example here. But I do want to take a little closer look at this SDL renderer just to see if we can get an idea of what that is. So in another documentation page, I'm going to go ahead and search SDL render. And we can see what this is. And it's a work in progress at this time. And it's a structure that contains rendering state. So for folks who have done some OpenGL or DirectX programming, this is going to be familiar in that you have this sort of big object that contains a state about how you're going to draw things. So for instance, what the color is of what you're drawing, how big the lines are, how big the points are. This general global state uh, essentially is held in each of these renderers. Maybe it's other things like what APIs you're using or library calls behind the scenes, uh, but that's just an idea of what this structure has. So, you know, overall, this documentation page isn't super helpful, but we probably do want to look at the create renderer function here. And this could probably give us an example. So for each of our windows, we'll be able to specify where the renderer is, perhaps the uh, index of the rendering driver. Um, and in most cases, we can just use minus one to initialize whichever one it supports, and then any additional flags controlling how we want to render things. So let's go ahead and look at an example here and see if we can just create a renderer here. So this is going to look familiar if our, from our setup where we create for a window the specific renderer. Uh, we're going to use minus one to just let SDL pick a driver for us for how it'll render the graphics. And we can use one of the flags, SDL render accelerated. And if we look down at the SDL renderer flags here in the help, we'll see that we have a few options here. So the software renderer here is an interesting one in that it's fallback. So it'll probably work on any system. You don't need any graphics card. This is probably good if you're following the series and using, say, a Raspberry Pi or some, you know, very uh, simple hardware. And these other options, well, this is sort of the default we want. We want to use hardware acceleration so that it runs fast, um, and then we can try these uh, other options as needed. Okay, so let's go ahead and create our render and eventually draw our shape here. So after I've created a window, it's time to now create a render object here. So I'm going to go ahead and follow along here, SDL, render, and this is a pointer because we're going to be allocating memory. And I can initialize this to null to start. And then let's go ahead and create our render and set it equal to SDL create renderer. And it's going to be for our window. That's the window that we want to associate our render with, the device driver that we want it to use, which we're going to let SDL choose for us, and SDL render accelerated. And that should be it. So let's make sure that if we compile this, 
there's no mistakes. And so far, so good with the two lines that we've written here. Now, what we're going to notice here in the application loop in the sample is that there's some new things that we have to do because, well, we have to manage the actual render. So what this means, in essence, is because we're going to be drawing things to the screen, we'll have to clear the screen every time we loop through it. That's what we get with this command here, SDL render clear. And if we're working with other surfaces, we might want to, for instance, draw to that surface and copy it onto our render. In our case right now, let's just see if we can draw a line, and that'll be enough uh, for this lesson. And then the final thing that we do is similar to how we've flipped surfaces before and done this sort of double buffering thing, is we want to present uh, to the screen whatever is on the render. So again, our render is going to take the full width and height of the window and then present the contents of whatever lines or rectangles and so on that we're drawing. So our main application loop is going to look something like this. What, I've, what I'm going to highlight here between lines 39 and 54. Well, first, we're going to handle our user input. Then we're going to handle any updates that may occur. And these could be things like logic in a game, artificial intelligence, maybe background scene events, networking events, and so on. Uh, and then we'll clear and finally draw the screen. So for now, let's just set up this clearing and drawing of the screen. We're going to do SDL render clear and our render that we have. And SDL render present our renderer. Okay, so this will finally show what we've drawn. And this gives us a clear uh, canvas. Uh, I'll put in sort of quotations, uh, meaning we're clearing or refreshing the render every time. And then here's where we'll actually do our drawing. Okay, so let's go ahead and revisit our previous scene here, or, or our command, SDL render draw line, and see if we can draw some lines here. So let's go ahead and draw a line, SDL, render, draw a line, and it's going to be associated with our uh, render. And let's just pick something simple so from 5.5, five, which will be the top left corner of our window to, uh, let's say, 100 and 120, just something like that. OK, let's go ahead and compile this, see if we've made any mistakes. So far, so good. And we'll try to run our program. And if I bring in my window, uh, apparently I can't see anything yet. Uh, because, again, for our renderer, we need to change the state of something. That is, we need to figure out, well, what color are the lines that we're drawing? And very likely at this point, the line that we're drawing is black. So if we look in this sample, we're going to see that there is, in fact, a way to set the drawing color. So let's go ahead and adapt our code. And right before we draw the line, let's change the state of how we're going to draw things. So SDL set render draw color, the specific render that we're going to be working with and the color. So with the red, green, and blue values ranging from 0 to 255, 255, uh, let's just draw a purely white line. That way it'll be visible against our black line. Um, and then there's this last value here, SDL alpha opaque. So opaque meaning that you can't see through it. Uh, we could probably specify this as 255, but let's follow the uh, convention here. It looks like they've set up uh, or defined some symbol that will always give us the right value, whether that's 1 or 0, some range between 0 and 1.0, or 0 and 255. OK, so we'll go ahead and run this here. And this time, if I uh, set my program, well, now my whole screen is white. So I've changed the uh, drawing color of our render or the state here. Hmm, so what else is going on? Well, let's try to figure this out. And I'm just going to close my window. And let's take a closer look at this sample here. We can see that we actually set the draw color twice. So we set it once before we do the clear. And that essentially clears the entire surface and makes it uh, a white. OK, so we probably want to do the same thing here with our example um, and figure out what the background clear color is going to be. So I'm just going to copy this line here, paste it in. And let's just give ourselves a black background. So zero, zero, zero. And that should also be opaque. We're going to rerun and compile. And now if I bring in our program here, this looks pretty good to me. So this could be a way that you can draw a simple 
lines, primitives, rectangles, and so on. So let's go ahead and do one more and draw a rectangle just to uh, sort of make this a complete example. So I'm going to go back in my documentation and look at the rendering of the rectangle. So here's all of our different functions that we have. And again, keeping in mind that we're doing this in every frame in our loop. So it's constantly redrawing the rectangle. And we have to do this because we're clearing the screen um, every time. So every time we call clear, we need to redraw. So let's look at our rectangle here and the parameters, the render that we want. And there actually is a structure for this uh, STL rect. So let's set that up here. And let's go ahead and just draw this again as a, a white triangle. So we've set our state here uh, to be white and we'll do our drawing here. And let's go ahead and draw this rectangle. STL render, draw rect, the render that it's part of and whatever the rectangle shape is. So I'm gonna go ahead and just create one here called rectangle and we'll have to create it above here. So create a rectangle. And this has a uh, structure associated with it, SDL rect. So let's go ahead and look at that. And we'll call this rectangle. So luckily the rectangle is pretty straightforward in how we set the parameters. As you would guess, we have X, Y for the initial position of the top left corner and the width and the height. Okay, so let's go ahead and create a rectangle and set the X position to, I'll say 50 the Y position to uh, 100, and the width to 20, and the height also to 20. Okay, so let's go ahead and try to run this, see if we've made any mistakes. Oops, one mistake here. Uh, because um, I have created this as a pointer, and because the scope's local, I'm just going to uh, create it as such. And it's going to want the address then because it's expecting a pointer here of our rectangle. So let's go ahead and fix that there. I'll rerun, recompile. And if I look at our system here, we have a tiny rectangle or since our sides are equal length, it's a square. So what we have here is a way to now draw shapes. And it's sort of this immediate mode style drawing where we say, hey, we want something. So as soon as we call this function, draw it in. And there's going to be other strategies to do this a little bit more efficiently. And using APIs like OpenGL and Direct3D and Metal, Vulkan, etc. is one way to very efficiently do this. But for now, and for most of us who say want to do 2D graphical applications or games, this can be a great API for just getting started. All right, so that's it for this one. You now know how to draw some shapes using SDL.